model of the, the dental compounder last time in 1991. This model has a choke. It's 1979, and world-famous car designer Giorgetto Giugiaro of Ital Design has just designed what is arguably his most influential and important car. He already had the Volkswagen Golf, Sirocco, the Lotus Esprit, and probably the most famous rally car of all time, the legendary Lancia Delta under his belt. He would go on to make such cars as the DeLorean DMC-12. But none of those cars, or any that came after it, mobilised the population and finished the job the Fiat 500 had started way back in the 50s. The Panda, with its boxy shape and groundbreaking functionality and load capacity in such a small car, has become part of daily life for almost every Italian, and indeed for many other enthusiasts all over Europe and the rest of the world. From its original design brief, it has been in continuous production since 1980, making over 6.5 million examples for everyday people like you and I to drive. Over 4.5 million of that number were what is called the first series, which is the strictly boxy shape we have come to love. The oil crisis of the 70s had created the need for Fiat, already widely known for making small cars for some 60 or 70 years in one form or another, to make a small, cheap to make and run family hatchback for the everyday Italian student, family, parent, grandparent to use and quite often abuse. It had to be clever in the use of the limited space it had, and it had to be cheap to manufacture too, to keep costs for working class people down. Fiat had revolutionised the idea of what a small cheap car could be with the Fiat 500 in the 50s, and now they planned to go even further in the 80s. The, the Panda does everything that the Fiat 500 did. You know, that kind of design brief. It was cheap to make, uh, cheap, very cheap to run, but it does it better because the, the Fiat 500 is slightly smaller in terms of dimensions than the Panda. However, the Panda, the, the space and the interior that you can use, either with the hammock dash that you have here, everything serves a purpose and, and everything can be everything can be used. And, and the, the idea is that the space is used very, very well. It's a shame that the, the Panda hasn't reached. In a way, it's a shame that the Panda hasn't reached the same level of uh, Weirdness <laughs> that the the Beetle, the two CV, and the Mini enjoy. Um, but at the same time, when was the last time you saw a Beetle advertised for five hundred pounds MOT? Exactly. Parts are very very cheap, very plentiful because the car was produced up until two thousand and three. In Italy, uh, and in most European markets, it was uh, it was. It was basically, they stopped selling it after about 1994, 1995 because the uh, legislation was starting to, to creep in uh, from the European Union, etc, etc. Um, and in Italy, those, those laws were not quite as stringent uh, at that particular time. People really do genuinely love this car. They love the Panda. But it's a bit different now, you know, it's a bit unusual. So that, that either gets the reaction of like, hey, my mum used to have one of them, or my dad used to have one of them, and they like it for its, its smallness, its, its sort of, for lack of a quirkiness, I guess. Um, they like it for that, and then, then other people, they just don't get it, so it's kind of like, if you take it to a classic car show, 9 out of 10 people will, will, will love it and want to talk to you about it, and then the other 1 out of 10, why, why is that here, it can't possibly be a classic car. I'll leave that up to opinion. I personally do believe it's a classic car. I mean, it doesn't get much more classic than being designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro. Per esempio, la stessa Panda mantiene questo tipo di logica dove è venuta dopo la Golf, però come prodotto di una vettura piccola che doveva avere grande abitabilità a solo due porte, quindi si è pensata a questa squadratura come un frigo, diciamo. E quindi la Panda come anche la Delta prima ancora, e in questa logica di contenere questa lunghezza totale e avere un'architettura eh, che facilita la composizione e razionalizza un po' gli spazi. And, uh, 
at the same time as it was designing cars such as the DFC 12, um, the Integrale, um, the, the Delta rather, I'm sorry. You know, so I mean, we're talking about a car that was designed by pretty much the world's best designer, arguably the world's best designer's peak. You know, at the peak of his talent, the peak of his genius. And genius is not a word that uh, gets bandied about an awful lot in car design circles, but um, if, if, if any one designer over the last century was going to get it, it would probably be Giorgio Cicero. If you'll notice, it just got a bit noisier in here because we're now in fourth gear, it doesn't have a fifth. <laughs> um, this is my third Fiat Panda. I've had a, a one litre injection parade before. I've had one litre uh, since the 4x4. Uh, they're very collectible now. And uh, this is the 750, which is 750cc of pure power. Now doing just under 70. Uh, which is uh, the limit for this road and it's doing it not, uh, not a problem, it sounds noisy but um, believe me it's still, it's, it's still pulling, it pulls like a, actually it pulls like a goddamn train, it's unbelievable for something that's sub one litre I actually suffer from really quite bad anxiety and um, uh, 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 when, I was become, when I was just becoming ill, I was becoming a father at the same time and I told myself that uh, I would have to get rid of my panda because it wasn't practical for having a for carrying a child around and um, I don't know if you can see it might be just out of shot but uh, I have my, my, my baby boy's car seat there he's one and a half years old now and um, he loves this car he loves it the thing that always strikes me about this car is it's like a Swiss army knife on wheels if you, if you need it it's in here it's at your fingertips very very well designed dashboard etc if you need it, it's at your fingertips. If you don't need it, it uh, ain't in there. Yeah. <laughs> the spare wheel's under the, under the bonnet, which makes an awful lot of sense, really, because it's nice and dry and warm in there. So you're not going to get one of these things, you know. You know sometimes have the, the rusty cages in below cars that rust instantly, and you can't even remove the spare wheel to fit it. Uh, if, it's in the, if it's in the boot, sometimes uh, in, in the boot can uh, get water in there sometimes. The spare wheel becomes rust, uh, becomes tarnished and rushed, rusted. Um, everything about it is just very, very clever. We have fresh air vents here. Uh, I've one heater in the middle. It gets warm. Does it get cold? Not so much. Uh, <laughs> in Japan, they actually had air conditioning as standard on the Fiat Panda, which I actually would really like air conditioning. But it's uh, unless you know your way around Japanese auction sites very very difficult to get a hold of. Can be done, uh, but uh, very very difficult to get a hold of. I personally would love air conditioning in this car. If I had one complaint about the Fiat Panda, I would say that um, I think it's very very, uh, this is the tin top, so it doesn't have a sunroof. I think it's very very hot, sometimes if it's sunny. Um, there's a lot to love about this car, there really really is, um, just a lot to love about this car, I, I do love it, I went away from pandas for about, I think it ended up being something like 10 months I was out, I was out of a panda, uh, and it's just not worth thinking about really. If you can go out to family outings in it, you can uh, take it on holiday, you can, you can go camping, uh, they're full there into a double bed. Um, there's so much to love about the car, it's so, it's so practical and so useful and you can do pretty much anything with it really. Uh, the 4x4 that they made as well, uh, hopefully I'll get some interviews with some of the 4x4 lads. Uh, these cars are becoming more and more popular all the time. I see that the, 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 the cost for them is, seems to be rising all the time. I'm not so sure that's a brilliant thing, I'm really not sure. but. Um, I don't have any control over it anyway, so all I can do is just enjoy it for what it is uh, to me. Hi, I'm Jim McGill and I'm a Fiat Panda fan. Today we're here at the biggest Fiat small car plant in Europe. It's Tichy, 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 Tichy probably, in Poland. And we're here to talk about the classic Fiat Panda. Now they never actually made it here at this uh, plant, 
but if you've driven a small Fiat in the last 15 to 20 years, it more than likely has been made here. My parents originally drove small Fiat's in the 70s and the early 80s, so when I kind of, they passed away, I kind of felt that I wanted to remember them, so I went and bought myself a small Fiat, and the first thing I found was a Fiat Panda 4x4. It's the community side. They're an unusual car to collect. Uh, there is a good online uh, community, and I have traveled quite a bit with my Panda, and it's made me a lot of friends. The only complaint I would make is like all sort of very old Italian cars is that it has rust and it does rust like anything that can really rust. Uh, what I like most about it um, is its story. Uh, the car that I, I've had, I think nine Fiat Pandas at the last count of the, of the classic shape and three of the newer ones. Um, but one of them is like really super important to me. Uh, we bought it off a little old lady who was giving up driving. She was called Sylvia, so we named the car after her. And we started doing charity challenges with it. Uh, the first year uh, we went to the Sahara. Uh, the next year we crossed the United States, um, came uh, along on Route 80, um, down Pacific Coast Highway, and then back on Route 66. Um, after that, we went to, oh, let me think, um, yes, Istanbul. We raced the Orient Express to Istanbul. Um, we won by 17 hours. Uh, we've taken it to the Arctic. We've got right to the very top of Norway. Uh, you're about a thousand miles from the North Pole at that point. Um, and it, it has been an amazing experience. Unfortunately, it's not here with me today because after all of that, it does need a little bit of work. I always say that when car manufacturers test cars, they take them to these places like the Arctic or Death Valley. Um, once they're finished with them, they have to take them and crush them because they're no longer safe. With my Fiat Panda, I had to actually drive it to work when I got home. So as I say, it needs a little bit of uh, TLC now. Hello everyone, my name's Owen and I'm from Wiltshire and I just wanted to answer these questions about the uh, Fiat Panda Classics. So I saw this panda here, the 1993 Fiat Panda Fizz, um, as a suggested item on eBay when I was looking at potential first cars um, to buy later on down the line, a couple of months later down the line after I passed my test. So this was before I'd started learning, um, well it was about the same time as I did start learning, but um, I had to view this car as it was local, so I did so, and um, as you can see it ended up on my driveway. Uh, not long after I went to see it, I did buy it, and it was delivered to me um, by the owner shortly after. I want to say really, everyone talks about the uh, the character and charm of pandas, um, and they're right really. It feels like it's more than just just a normal everyday car. It's, it's interesting to own one, they're a classic now, it's something different, it's a fairly simple design, it's something that just really works. So the question is what complaints do you have about the Panda and the main complaint really is normally just about rust and that's just something that all old cars suffer with really it's not just something exclusive to the Panda but it's something that claimed um, a lot of them and still does really um, in particular there's nothing I can really complain about uh, when it comes to these cars um, even if a prop shaft is playing up on uh, my 4x4 Sicily at the moment um, which probably can't make out very well in the dark right now, but um, I've got the light shining on my fizz um, from the Sicily right now. So uh, the next part really is any um, interesting facts about these cars. So I just wanted to quickly go through and say this one, uh, this is a 1993 Fiat Panda Fizz. So it's a single point injection 999cc uh, Fiat engine, the fire model. And really it just runs a dream the single point injection really does um, the fizz edition had decals and stripes down the side unfortunately this one has lost that now but I would like to get some again in the future for this one the 4x4 Sisley was obviously the 4x4 drivetrain model and uh, this is an 88 1988 um, 909 cc again but this one's a carb model so this one's uh, a bit more with the, the rough stuff I suppose and uh, behind the garage door is a 1993 Fiat Panda CLX so really the same um, idea and engine as the Red Fizz um, 
the only difference is it didn't come with the, with the decals, it just said CLX on the side. Um, well, this one's lost its decals now, so I suppose this one's uh, a bit, really, quite the same. I seem to be quite obsessed and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. My first panda was, uh, I bought it in 2012. Um, it was a purple um, one litre uh, Twin Sunny Parade edition. And uh, it was it was lovely, I loved it. Uh, it was an import from my Isle of Jersey. And uh, the reason I, I bought it was because I'd been looking at uh, Tipos and the... Uh, because I learned to drive in a Tipo. I've been looking at Tipos and Unos for a little while trying to get into because I wanted a classic car. And then all of a sudden I remember being on eBay one of the days and thinking, you know, I, I, I haven't thought about the Panda. Should I look at Pandas? And I looked at Pandas and instantly I saw this square little car and I, I sort of fell in love with the pictures of the thing and uh, ended up, I didn't place a bid because I got mixed up between, because it was an import, I thought it was left-hand drive. One of the photos had been reversed, I believe, or it hadn't been reversed, but I thought it had been reversed. So that's why I didn't bid on it. But then I found out later, I'd been logging onto the Fiat forum when I was doing my research into Pandas, that um, it had actually been sold and I think it was £495 it sold for and uh, I was gutted but then I, I said I just said well I'll give you a little bit more money uh, if, if and when because the, the, the people that were selling it were on the forum they were disappointed with how little it had made and uh, I said well I'll give you a little bit more money if the, if the person buying it falls through if they don't happen to not come I'll come up to Fife and I, which is where it was at the time and I'll get it and I'll, and I'll have it and look after it and, and I did. What do I like most about pandas? Just their quirkiness, their weirdness. The, the community is probably one of the best things about the panda. Um, I like that it's an underdog. So it's, 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 definitely, it's definitely an underdog story of a car because it, it stores more than um, cars twice its size. It uses space so cleverly. Um, it, it, never lets you down you know if something does go wrong with it it's going to be something fairly simple and somebody in the community can help you sort it and probably supply you with the parts for it <laughs> it's so simple i love it and i think that's the thing about most people in the community once you have one panda yeah this is my third one uh i've had a sizzly as well and um you just fall in love with them you fall in love with the shape of them the quirkiness of them the weirdness of them various things about them to fall in love with really one of the complaints is which can be sorted by one of the chaps on the forum by the way is that this this wiper spline here wears out and uh, your what your front wiper goes flying in a spectacular fashion usually <laughs> and uh, which has happened to me a couple of times now um apart from that apart from the obvious rust which happens to pretty much every older car uh, I think because these cars wouldn't necessarily have been taken care of for most of their their life, pretty much. Rust can be a little bit of an issue. But again, they're small cars and it's not generally so bad that it can't be sorted or that it's uneconomical to, to sort them, which is which is a, a definite bonus. Um, it just depends how much love you have for the car. If you love the car enough, then it'll get sorted. Basically, do I have any interesting stories about this one? No, I don't think I've got any interesting stories about this one as such. Um, I, I, I ended up getting this one after having a beat. I'd been out of the. I'd sold my Sizzly and my Parade because I was becoming a dad. And I, and I got it into my head. Uh, I've got some pretty bad anxiety, as I said earlier in the video. I got it into my head that a panda would not be safe for a child to travel in. Now, if you can see in there. <laughs> I've got my boy's car seat in there, so I obviously I travel with him pretty regularly in there, and um, he loves it. So he does. He's he's, he's nearly two now. He loves he loves the panda. Um, but I'd had a BMW ninety six BMW seven season. It, of course, when I lost my job, became too expensive to run, and it and it ended up needing a lot of work doing to it for an MOT. So I basically had to scrap it. Unfortunately. Uh, but hey ho, and then I ended up, um, once I was starting to get better again, I started to look at, right, okay, well, it'd be nice to have a car to be getting about, be getting about in again. And uh, I went onto the Fiat Forum, uh, and uh, this one was actually in Glasgow, which is fairly close to me, um, for free. A chap was kindly giving it away because he was losing his storage. It needed a bit of work doing, of course, uh, as they always do, but and actually, generally speaking, it's really quite nice. Um, and uh, really 
wasn't needing too much work doing so I, I gladly took it on board and uh, fixed it up and now it's my daily so I mean I'd, I could not be happier with it uh, I could not be happier being part of the community as well um, it's great it's 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 almost like the Beatle but without the the crazy financial layout <laughs> it's, it's it's a beautiful thing man it really is and the community's fun community's probably the best part about it and uh, the ease with which these things can be fixed and the knowledge which gets shared among us all is great thank you so much for watching i hope sincerely hope you've enjoyed it thank you